Good morning. It's Monday, November 21st, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, All New. And our scripture is Revelation chapter 21, where the Apostle John is getting a tour of heaven. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshippers, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who held the seven bowls containing the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come with me, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper as clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high, with twelve gates guarded by twelve angels, and the names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. The wall of the city had twelve foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. One of the chief benefits of the view from the balcony is that you get a wider perspective on the landscape below. Many artists throughout the centuries have attempted to present a picture of heaven. It's easy to get lost in details such as imagining a cube of a city, 1400 miles wide and long and high, or gates of pearl and the various precious metals of the walls and streets. You could muse on wonderments like that for years and still miss the wider perspective. That wider perspective is the stark divide between what is present in the New Jerusalem and what is missing. And this marks the most significant difference between renovation and recreation. When humanity envisions quote-unquote new, we are imagining creation, but we are merely rearranging what has already been created by God. When God makes everything new, that which was nothing comes into existence. Artists can hardly capture what the mind cannot possibly imagine. Our life on this planet consists of a struggle to be born, followed by the sparks of trouble flying upward from the fire of everyday cares. There are moments of joy, splendor, and contentment, and then our three score and ten are over in the blink of an eye. But the new in God's recreation surpasses what we can fathom. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So, what do we do in the meantime, awaiting the revelation of New Jerusalem's glory? Do we just imagine some ethereal, cloudy impression of wonder? Do we forget it like some long, locked-away treasure, or just go to sleep like a good child on Christmas Eve awaiting the dawn? Well, I think there's more for right now. The Apostle John was given this glimpse or tour of glory in a vision, gates of pearl, precious stone walls, streets of transparent gold. It was a balcony view with sights he did not understand, and therefore could not adequately describe. But even with a wider perspective, I'm certain the detail did not escape what John saw. He saw a river and a tree of life and a lamb's book, and on one of the foundation stones of the new city of Jerusalem, he saw the name inscribed, John. For you today, John knew his name was written for eternity, and you can know it too. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.